Well, the health crisis providing an unexpected boost for sea turtles on the island. They're actually benefiting from having fewer people around over the past few weeks. As Christian Von Pricing reports, those who are out to protect them also looking to the future. Well, those empty beaches did give them a break. It's also the one year anniversary, the largest effort in 20 years to support this critically endangered species. After roughly six weeks indoors for us, the beaches of South Padre Island got a chance they rarely get. Nesting season has officially started. A chance to be free of people and a chance for the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle to have the beach to itself. A lot of our mamas, like I said, tend to nest away from people. That's sea turtle link biologist Mariana Devlin. Uh, Heather is asking how many turtles actually make it after hatching. This is one of their first efforts of the nesting season. They're transplanting newly laid eggs to protect them, starting with three females who laid two weeks ahead of schedule on South Padre Island, even laying them closer to the city than before. They got to lay their eggs in peace, Devlin says, with fewer of what they call false crawls. Coming up and then they see people, they get scared and then they go back. So we call that a false crawl. So the turtle actually crawled out of the ocean in an attempt to nest, but then she goes back into the ocean because she gets scared or, you know, spooked by, by a, a big group of people. Sea turtles are also benefiting from new land away from people. 6,200 acres acquired this time last year. This all started with the deep water horizon spill. It had devastating impacts on the ecology, wildlife, uh, uh, economy. That's Jeff Francell from the Nature Conservancy. He coordinated the purchase of all that land that's now benefiting the sea turtles. The remediation orders brought by the Deepwater Horizon spill more than 10 years ago brought in millions of dollars to make that purchase. We would not have been able to accomplish the things that we've accomplished protecting land along the coast like Padre Island uh, without the oil spill funding. These things would not have happened. That land purchased a few miles north of where the road ends. Really fills in a, a major gap it was purchased and given to the Laguna de Escosa National Wildlife Refuge, important habitat the government wants to protect. Home to a surprising amount of wildlife. I think people are always impressed to hear that there are white-tailed deer there, there's coyotes, bobcats. Boyd Bill Hovde, manager of Laguna de Escosa, says now since the Fish and Wildlife Service owns land south of the East Cut, people who drive up the beach need to know they'll be enforcing the rules. It's legal to drive the beach, but the dunes can't be touched. 100% legal to drive the beach, but uh, it is having a major impact on the dunes when folks go up and in the 100s um, go out there in those large groups and try to off-road on the dunes. It, it causes roads that stick around for years. It um, increases the rate of erosion when we do have a storm. Dunes that protect us from storms and protect several species of endangered wildlife that roam this area. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtle protected by a line in the sand. Developing up this, this far would really start to uh, have a serious impact on wildlife. They hope this protection will mean that endangered species will continue doing better. And the Nature Conservancy is also planning another purchase this month. It could lead to the opening of another set of public land which could allow you to access that in the future. We'll keep you posted on that. Christian Von Pricing, Channel 5 News at 10, Westlaco.